Hi everybody. I'm Tannis. I'm Chris. This is Tannis Fiber Arts. We are Tannis Fiber Arts. We knit. We do. Um, I think I have some of these still in the shop. So good. I just feel like if I'm going to be wearing it and pointing to it, I need to tell you that. Not every size. We did these last year. Um, we had a couple pre-orders and they're not available in every size anymore. But, but there are still some everything? in the shop. There were maroon hoodies there were black hoodies both zip up there i think the black zip up hoodie is sold out there is still black navy blue crew necks and maroon hoodies what about the pantalon i couldn't say okay if we have any left there's like one or two i knew somebody i got mine early and i wear them all the time i you, wear them to pick up you knew somebody yeah i had an inside you had track in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so we didn't do a we didn't do a sweatshirt this year well it's always fun to have those things in the pipeline yeah maybe after i like to like people love them for gifts so it's sort of nice to have it before the holidays but also there's so much before the holidays so yeah. let's spread it out yeah the timeline is just too stressful um okay so that's that so this week we're going to talk about i asked on instagram for some questions and was posed some questions and i will answer them yeah uh, we said we'd go in order, but maybe I would answer or ask. You the pick. First pick a question, and then I will. Since you just hit on it. Chitty chat. Um, yeah, some of these have something to do with things that come up around the holidays. Uh, why don't we start with this one? What made you decide to do an advent this year? And what is your comfort knit? That's kind of a bonus question. These are two different questions. Not related to the okay, initial question. Okay, the advent. So do you want to talk about... I want to talk about the advent because that's what's been going on. Yeah. 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 What made us decide? What made us decide? I'll tell you what made us put it off so long was um, any way you cut it, there is a lot of mini skeins involved mm -hmm. and a lot of packing. A lot of assembly time. Yeah. Which... Um, Historically for us has overlapped with huge prep for the Boxing Day sale mm -hmm. and has felt like too much to take on. Mm -hmm. um, and also we've always done a gift bundle, yeah. which has been more involved in past years in terms of project bags, yeah. sourcing things for it, yeah. packaging and sending those out. I think our, our number one thing, especially around the holidays, we're not taking on stuff that we can't get to you in time. Yes. Right? So... Look, this is why we've never done an advent before, because I couldn't feel like we could do both the gift bundle and the advent while preparing for a Boxing Day sale, while also just fulfilling our regular work obligations. <laughs> and this year, so then I don't know why for the first time it occurred to me this year. What if we did the advent instead of the gift bundle? Right. <laughs> and so, because every year when advents come out, people are very excited about them. I see them on Instagram and they make they me excited. They are excited, for sure. Me too. And yeah. then I'm like, oh, we should do that. But I just, it just seemed like so much. So we decided about a month ago to prioritize it. I'll tell you another factor that's related to it too. The last handful of years we've had, on top of all the work stuff, Christmas is busy family yeah. guys and we've had little kids that needed a lot of attention this yeah. year we we, we noticed elves. today <laughs> <laughs> we were talking this morning like that we have big kids yeah not teens not tweens like our youngest is still five nobody naps um well, they haven't napped in years, but you know, they're not babies. Like this, everything, life isn't very, as overwhelming. In this very specific context, they have been helping. They a work. Lot. They like work. not just um, yeah. for show or not just the oldest. All three of them have been assembling boxes and yeah. packing orders under yeah. like under light supervision. supervision. They don't require well, that Well, look, much. put it this way. Yesterday, I was busy during the day and I came home and Chris had packaged up enough yarn so the mini skeins, okay, they we're putting them in little boxes and then little boxes go in very a big cute. box. It's very cute. Yeah. Okay, they're all numbered. Um, Do because, you want to tell them how you felt about how I decided the number should go? Or is that too inside? Oh, well, we can tell them that I had a panic attack and I almost undid everything that he did to redo it because I was like, he put the boxes in. I had laid it all out. Okay, first I just want to explain. When you have an advent as the person making the advent, in my opinion, there's basically three packaging options. 
Option number one, get like a custom designed box with like doors that open like like a chocolate advent calendar. Like you can Very you can involved. buy those sure. uh, if you plan and do Google. I don't mm. know where, whatever. Option two. Um, does the lighting look super weird? But it might have been the fine. sun shifted outside. Out. I mean, it's Go like sunset us. now. It's yeah. afternoon. Um, option two is wrap every skein individually in tissue paper. And then option three is uh, boxes. So yeah. little boxes in a larger box. We went for option three, little boxes in a larger box, because we, we did a couple of trials with the tissue paper and it was like, this seemed, it seemed more annoying. Yep. At any rate, so we're doing the boxes. This is, I'm just going to try. Oh no, there's nothing. There's nothing to be done. It's just going to have a washed out 70s vibe. Okay. I have to, you know, it's fine. Sun. We don't even have a curtain in we that can't, window. We can't, there's nothing we can do about this. <laughs> Look at it. Uh, okay. Are you, are you super distracted? By I'm that? distracted, but also fine. We'll just see. We'll see when we look at it. Um, it looks like we're in a ray of light, but I guess that's... I find it beautiful. Angelic. So basically, instead of doing things um, left to right in rows, like a calendar, <laughs> I decided to put the numbered boxes down in columns. And Up to tennis top thought, to bottom. Tennis thought I had numbered them in that fashion as well, which I hadn't. I, you had the numbers right, the like one was with one, properly. two with two. Like you put the right yeah. yarn in the correct box, but then he put the boxes in the bigger box in an order that made absolutely no sense. I to was me. like taken aback yesterday and thinking about it now, I was completely in the wrong. And like we went to great lengths to make it a beautiful <laughs> gradient to open. And, and then why he would just you like not have it in line like that? them in a weird order. I'm just going to try to switch it more like, oh, okay. Stop. Getting artsy. Yeah, I think that helps. Does it? Now you can see our kitchen, but that's... I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Listen. Um, okay, but this was what I was going to tell you, is I was out all day. You worked all day packaging up boxes, mm -hmm. right? And then at 4 p.m., I came home with the kids. They were enth enthusiastic about yeah. packaging. And in a matter of, like, maybe two hours, me... Our 10 year old and our five year old packaged up as much as you had packed up all day. Yeah, and I was informed by one of them that my technique must be not good or inefficient. Was it Micah? I don't know. What, what like, did they say? Well, I just went down to tell everyone how well they were doing, and he was like, Yeah, your technique must have been terrible. Uh, well, actually, because we you didn't put them all, they, you didn't have them all boxed. So we boxed them and they oh, went, Oh, I and can it see where they got it from. But it was. No, but it was, it's just the amount of time. I just can't believe like they work almost as fast as an adult. Like, so to have. Th as an adult tennis, I don't work fast under any circumstances. Right. I'm steady. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's what is quite funny. Cause I, I am like twice as fast as our 10 year old. Yeah. And he was like, kind of feeling like he wasn't doing it fast enough. And I'm like, you are doing it very fast. Yeah. What's something, I'm almost 40, okay? And what I've learned in my 40 years on this planet is that, like, I could have been an elf. Yeah. <laughs> like one of yeah. Santa's elves. Yeah. I am so fast. And do you know who has that, though? Our five-year-old. Yeah, she's, she's unreal. She's there with little she boxes. She put the little boxes together, like, maybe seven times faster than I could do yeah. it. Yeah. She was so fast. And then she kept wanting, like, she wants to help. And since she's five, I'm... Like, I feel like she needs a lot of supervision and I'm worried she's going to put something in the wrong place. She doesn't. Not at all. And and so I'm like, okay. It's sort of like, you know, kids want to help and you're like, well, they're going to make more. Like, they want to wash the windows because they love Windex. Yeah. You're like, okay, I'll let them wash the windows and then I'll just go wash them again after. Yeah. Not with her. She well, puts the stuff. specifically in windows. Windows, okay. Problem. I'm just trying to relate because not everybody, yeah. not everybody can relate to toddlers putting yarn in boxes. Sure, yeah. But everybody has a window. Yeah. But at any rate, she can put them on. So why did we decide to do it? It's just that it was something that seemed like fun. We felt like we could manage it this year because our kids are older and because we weren't doing a typical gift bundle like we've done in years past. Felt like the and interest in it was yeah. enough to um, override any fears of the extra mm -hmm. finicky work. Mm -hmm. And It's been fun. It's fine. Now, I will say you were complaining about a sore hips. Oh, from sitting cross I'm complaining on the floor. about a sore back yeah, because we do it on the floor. We're not spring and, chickens. Yeah, we're just like me. It's because I'm hunched over you at any rate. So we're trying to. 
It's because my legs are so powerful. <laughs> but the it's going well. We're going to meet our deadline. I'm quite happy about all that yeah. because... I was so nervous going in, but we, um, we took a week to develop the colors and kind of leaving a little more time than that if we needed it. Mm -hmm. But we seem to get... I don't know if it's really lucky or if we're just super on the same page, but we kind of executed the vision very quickly and yeah. I'm really happy about it. So yeah, if it's you really manage nice. to um, get yourself nice. one, congratulations and, and you're, you're in for a treat. And I think we're going to do more of them. Like not maybe, you know, we'll do more fun projects like this. It's a fun project, a fun thing to put together. Yeah. Um, but that brings me to another one. There was a segue with another question, which was, will you be offering pattern suggestions for your advent calendar minis? Okay. And the answer is, yeah, I'm going to put together either a blog post, probably with a Pinterest board. I'm going to share. I've knit. I'm on my fourth project currently that I'm knitting with the We were talking about that last week, that it's kind of, um, Jan would love to share the pictures of it, but you can't. Yeah, you well, I talked time. about it in last week's episode as yeah. well, and I kind of asked people how they felt about it. And basically, the mystery is a big part of it. For sure. So maybe we'll do some other types of things throughout the year, like where not everything is a mystery, because I... Yeah love knitting with the yarn from like the advent when we've done clubs we'll do like three mystery skeins and then i sp spend like two months knitting with yarn that i can't show anybody and it's right. just not how i like to really work but um i'm knitting projects so i'm going to share the projects that i've made obviously but then some other suggestions i'll be honest if you go on ravelry or if you go on pinterest and you type in like advent pro like just knitting advent you know well ravelry you don't have to specify knitting or crochet but on pinterest you would there's like, there are so many patterns that are knit, written specifically for Advent kits because yes. so many people make them. And so like so many dyers make them. And so designers make shawl. A shawl is a very popular one, you know, mm -hmm. like a rectangular stole where you go through the colors and it really highlights the yarn. So I can tell you right now that I didn't knit one of those with our kit because it seems it's very easy to find any pattern that's going to suit your like you can knit stripes and anything so anyway um so if you're looking for ideas i mean they're there i'm going to highlight a lot of those for sure and then but ours is a gradient because there are also some patterns that require more contrast yeah. or require yeah. a solid and you know those yeah. that 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 might not fit specifically with the yarn that we're creating so i will give some tips but also one of my biggest tips, do you want to know what it is? Two of the project that I chose to knit with this year's Advent, I held the yarn double okay. to knit like a marl. Marl is when you're holding two yarns together and it makes almost like a... I know that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and that is, you know, just a... I don't want to... I don't want to... Thinking outside the box, like it's not that creative, but also it really opens up like a lot more pattern yeah. possibilities because yeah. you can pick a worsted weight pattern and knit it in a gradient because you can knit any worsted weight pattern in a gradient mm -hmm. cables anything particularly in a gradient that's subtle like what we've created right it's going to be really beautiful and not distracting or whatever yeah mm -hmm. so to sum that up we're very happy to be in our first advent calendar and mini skein gradient stuff like that is probably there's going to be a few more down the pipeline so if you feel regret for missing this one, we'll probably uh, yeah. working on some more. Uh, let me read you another question here. I'd watch a whole video on your color pairing slash set. Your choices are always so nice. I struggle. Okay. Not a question. <laughs> okay, so where do we go? Where do we go um, with that? Tips on color pairing? I know... For me, the first thing that comes up when I read that is um, that is something you have an innate skill okay. for, right? So this You're... question is less a question and more just let's everybody talk to Tannis yeah, about yeah. how much they kind like of, her yeah, color. Lavish some yeah. uh, some praise on Tannis for her sense of color pairings. Okay, so here's, I'll give some really basic tips. Number one, look around you at the things that you already own, things that you've bought, like clothing that you've bought from a store, not stuff that you made and chose what, or something that you made that you chose the colors on that you love, or like, you know, ceramics that you have, or art that you have, or sheets that you have, and look at the colors that are in those. Those are things that you bought, things that you like. Yeah. And 
jump, use that as a jumping off point. Um, anything, like we have, I'm just looking right now. Like this is a photo album that was just sitting on my um, table. If you were like, oh, what a great rainbow. Knit, knit, there you go. There's a color path, a palette for you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like just looking around, there's color palettes everywhere. And um, I mean, I don't know. It's also Pinterest. <laughs> there's, color, <laughs> there's color palettes everywhere to choose from. If you can't pick your own, you know what I mean? Like if it's not helpful to you for me to just say, because the other one is like, go with your gut, yeah. right? It's like, if you have a coup de craft or something, like you see colors and you just know. But some people just don't know. Well, you know what they do? They don't give enough um, faith to what they like. Yeah. So that's, I think your point Maybe. is really important that if you're looking at a website with you know an abundance of choices, it might be really hard for you to put, say, eight colors together. But if you look around your house, things you like, like a purchased item of clothing, there's probably eight colors in a lot of things that yeah. where you can find your wheelhouse, like yeah. where, you know what you like, like, and you know you like it because you bought it. You know, you're don't standing. worry if it's all grayscale. That's fine too. Some of well, us that's are like true that. too. Well, do you know what the other thing I will add? I have a very specific sense of color. I know what I like, yeah, and I'm really confident in it. And it doesn't bother me if other people don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that that's something that people get really hung up on. Like for example. Some people don't like turquoise, like a lime green to turquoise to navy. And I'm yeah. like, you're crazy. No, right. I don't think you're crazy. I think <laughs> not for you, yes for me. Like right. I look at that and it yeah. makes me feel something. And then while other people feel, like there's some color combos. I said recently in a, in a couple episodes back, I had done this spinning and I, I had bought, I owned two braids of fiber that both featured kind of a chartreuse light green and some pink kind of mauvey tones in it. So actually both of them are mysteries. I didn't choose them. They were both like clubs because mm -hmm. I wouldn't have chosen it because I said in the thing and I stand by it. I personally am not really drawn to like a pink and green combo. Right. I mean, there's like a color of a watermelon. That's like an extreme example of pink and green. Yep. But then there's also like really a lot of people love like a dusty rose and a moss. It's a very popular color combo. There's nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't make me feel anything. But if that's what you love, yeah, like that's great. Mm -hmm. And now I can put together a scheme that that involves that if that's what you really like. But I think my point is like sometimes I, I get emails from people. This is the other thing. You can email me anytime because I am very familiar with the colors that we dye. Sure. You know, so if somebody yeah. wants a color palette, or people will say, I have these four colors. What's the fifth color that'll tie it together? She's probably run through the options. Yeah, I've yeah. thought about it. And the thing is, it happens all the time where I know, it may, I give people a suggestion of what I would do. I try to give a couple suggestions because not everybody always wants blue, you know, or gray, because those are sort of the things that I'll go to. So I give a couple suggestions and then they'll like sheepishly write back that they decided to go with like option three, you right. know, like something else. And I'm like, amazing. Like, that's fine. You know, even in I your, love it. your immediate family, like your sister leans towards purple. Your mom like, loves a bright red. My mom's all red. You yeah, totally. You were heavily blue and have branched out to uh, golds, corals, earth tones. Yeah, I've branched yeah. out, but I'm still all blue. Let's, let's make no At mistake. Heart, yeah. But it is true that the, my color sense is not what I would knit for my mom because right. it's not what she, uh, it's not what makes her heart sing. Yeah. Um, and so I appreciate, but that's the thing about like dyers and any type of artistic person. Like if you like my color sense and you like what I'm putting out there, then like that, then, then great. I'm you can glad lean that, on that if you I'm want. I'm glad that we found each other. Yeah. <laughs> but if you don't, like there's another dyer out there specializing in like pink and moss. You know what I mean? Or us. We'll hook you up. Does well, we can do blue? pink and moss. I like sure. all kinds of colors. Anyway, I just feel like, but also color. I just feel like looking around, not every color that you come up with needs to be, or like color pairing for a sweater for needs to be sprung out of your brain from nowhere. Like yeah. look around, look at your stuff, yeah. pick a palette that you like. Album artwork, a nice poster, anything, whatever. Anything. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna read the next one. It okay. says, how many projects are you working on currently as far as knitting? Oh, I'm a very... I'll let you answer first. Yeah. Oh, wait. You for me first? Mine's a quick answer, zero. Okay, zero. <laughs> Uh, me, me quick one. 
I work on yeah. one thing at a time, yeah. really, for the most part. I'm really pretty, what's that word, monogamous? Uh, let's my call knitting. it laser focused. Yeah, I like start and finish. I rarely have, I have one pair of needles that I knit right. my socks on. Yeah. Like I don't have. I was trying to think because there's definitely been times where you've had yeah. a couple of things on the needles, but she'll finish one, grab the other, finish it. It's not like a back and forth. I do, so right, yeah. I do like to have, oh, I didn't answer part two of what made you decide to do an advent. What is your comfort knit? The person says, mine is socks. Mine is also socks. Yeah. Like I like to have a pair of socks waiting for me. So like I'll have a sweater and a pair of socks on the needles. And because if you finish your sweater, I don't want to be sitting there being like, now I have to <laughs> come up with all the new plans of yarn and pick a pattern for another sweater, like yeah. for a big project. I like to just have like a little project on the go, which is often socks. But lately, even when I'm knitting socks, like I am currently knitting just a pair of socks. Right. I have nothing else on the needles. Although I, oh no, that's not true. I currently have two sweaters on the needles. One sweater that is missing a sleeve that has been missing a sleeve since before we moved to this house in 2020. So it, but it's, it's, Where I'm is thinking that? about it. It's in the corner. Huh. And then another sweater that is also missing two sleeves. So actually I was lying. I, uh, I have, I have uh, two sweaters and a pair of socks. And so I love for socks. For the most part, you rip through one project. I. Start, I only have one. You start thinking about what's next it. before you're done, but you don't start and lean your Yeah. Lean. Yeah. And I knit a lot of sweaters. I say socks are my comfort. I knit a lot of sweaters yeah. these days, eh? Yeah. I used to knit. I haven't. I don't knit a lot of shawls and scarves anymore. I used to knit a lot more, but I'm really in the sweater zone. I don't know why. Mine would be a sea chat. If you got to throw something on the needles. Yeah. Rather than socks for me, it's the sea chat. I was just thinking I should knit a bunch. I'd like to see Rowan and Micah in them this year. Especially Micah with his little pea coat. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. Sure. Uh, what was the first thing you ever knit? What is your favorite breed to spin? Another two-parter. Okay, these are easy. First thing I ever knit is a little scarf for my Snoopy stuffed animal. Oh, yeah. I have it. A neon acrylic yes. yarn. Yes, it was a little Very kit cute. with all this acrylic yarns that I learned how to knit when I was probably six or seven or something. And I knit a, a little scarf. I tied it on my stuffy, and I uh, still have it. Still have the stuffy. Still have Shout the stuffy. out to acrylic yarn. Yeah, not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. No, it's <laughs> great. Um, and it was a great little project. Love it. So that was the first thing I knit, and then also the first like then I didn't knit for a long time after that. It's like four stitch rows, right? Well, I think I cast on 10 and then I had 12 and then I had nine and then 15. You know, it's, it is what it is, but it's, uh, it's great. But then, I, and I don't know what would be my first, um, since then, you know, when I rediscovered knitting in my like teens, I knit a bunch of scarves and then I knit a few failed sweaters and then kind of really hit my stride in my early twenties, mm -hmm. like 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, but I have no idea what my first like sweater. No, because I knit so many that like don't exist anymore. I knit a sweater as a teenager that was supposed to be a turtleneck, but I didn't knit it long enough. So it was a mock neck. It was just like a high neck that didn't fold over, but I still loved it. And it was, I knit it with three quarter sleeves by accident, just because I didn't like measure properly. And I wore, I don't know what happened to that sweater. I wore the, uh, the Jesus out of it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Like I wore it all the time. And do you know that my cousin once, um, my cool older guy cousin, we were, I don't know where we were, we were, we were somewhere, and I was wearing it, and I was meeting some of his friends, and he'd had a few, and he was introducing me to his friends and like talking, oh, this is my cousin, like, and then he said, kind of like out of nowhere, this is why it's important to the context that he had had a few, because <laughs> he was like, kind of not making that much sense, he was like, she's got such great style, I mean, Look at the, look at this sweater. He and then he basically was like, like who wears a turtleneck like that? Where do the sleeves go? And I was just like, ah. I thought it was very funny at the time because they were like, he he thought it was intentional, and I was like, oh, I'm really pulling it off. It's more of a Gordon Gartrell. It was a Gartrell, yes. But I thought that was so funny. That is funny. I've got it. I've always had the. Yeah, but I wear it with confidence. I loved the sweater. I was proud of it, and I wore it. 
We have a double here. Oh, no, oh I didn't already. answer my what's my favorite breed. Look, I don't have one. I don't know anything about sheep. <laughs> no, tennis is like a proficient spinner, mm -hmm. uh, but not, I hope I'm not trying to take you down here, but um, some people are really into the spinning world and yep. you are kind of on the surface a little bit. Right? I have been spinning for like, I think I've had my spinning wheel for 15 years. Yeah. 16 years, maybe. Yeah. Love it. Love to spin. I spin the same thing, the same yeah. way. I've learned nothing. No, I've only <laughs> learned, like, I don't watch YouTube videos about different methods. I don't know much about sheep. I bought, last year at Knit City, uh, Montreal, last May, I bought four beautiful braids of, of wool, solely based. They were four different breeds, but I chose the four different breeds only because I wanted those four colors. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm really yeah. color motivated. And then as I spun them, I had feelings about which one I preferred. And don't remember them now? I think the one I liked is Rambouillet. Rambouillet. Rambou creme, creme brulee. Creme brulee. You heard it here first. Yeah. Um, but I don't have strong feelings. Um, I like something smooth. I'm more concerned about the colors. And I've just accepted that because I do feel like as a knitter and a spinner and as somebody in my position, I'm supposed to care more. And I don't. But it's right. okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. That's some, it's also like some people who sew, like with the sewing machine, like are really into the gear and are, I just want a machine that's like, that I can sew yeah. a straight line <laughs> and it's zigzag, you know, but I don't, I don't like gear. I'm not technically, yeah. I'm not an engineer. I'm not comfortable with lots of bits and bobs. I can think of a good I'm parallel. Specific. It's like if you were um, a really good guitar player and didn't care about pedal boards and sound effects and yeah, didn't sure. research tube amps properly. Yeah. You just play. You just play. You just play. She's a virtual, so everyone. That's it. <laughs> Artist. Yeah. I, I just care about the colors. All right. Next one. What colors do you recommend using to knit your marled sea chat? This is a funny question. It's kind of loaded unintentionally. As in what? As in there's no correct answer. Right. This is a trick question. Yep. Um, you can knit it in whatever color you want, but to, so the actually, I saw this we question. We will not be tricked. Up. We will not be tricked. I, I saw this question, so I got my siege hat, my marled siege hat, to show you. This is was knit with five different colors of fingering weight. Um, I knit, you know, so let's call them colors. I'm going to call them colors A through E. Started with two strands of color A, then I dropped one of color A, held one of color A with one of color B, and then two of color B, and then one of color B with one of color C. You know what I mean? That's how you go through a super... And I think that this gradient turned out really, really well. I mean, not a bad plan for something like an admin. Well, there you go. So that's part one of my answer mm -hmm. is... So nice. I love it. Okay, it's a two-part answer. If you want a really smooth gradient... I think that speckles are mandatory. Okay. And I think that the colors need to be closer than you think. Speckles are mandatory in the sense that um, solids will leave a stripe yeah. from a distance. It will be striped. Yeah. You will see it. There's no overlap in the tones. And so you could pick five very subtle solids, you know, that don't yeah. take such a big leap. But you're still going to see it's so crisp when you go from two of color A to one of color A and one of color B. Yeah. Now, how, having said that, my color A here was a semi-solid. It's hand-dyed, so it's tonal. It's not totally solid. But my color B was a very subtle speckle. Yeah. So, and it had the same background color, so it kind of just went from being beige to being beige with a speckle. Yeah. And then my third color was almost just like a slightly more gray version of my second color. Like, there just no big jumps. It has to be very subtle. The shifts, in order to have a really successful, subtle gradient, if you want a bigger jump, like, if you don't mind seeing stripes, but if the point is for it to be a gradient to look like it was knit like the yarn was made to do that then they need to be re really subtle um steps and then they need to be and if not speckles then like a multi like normally i'm not much of a multi person but um one of our colorways like tartan is one of the colorways that i is the last color that i used in this yeah 
and tartan has is, is just a multi with no speckles. Right. But there's a lot of different colors going on, and so it really overlapped with the color that I used before. There was a lot of overlap in color, and so it just makes it a lot more fluid. Do you know what? I'll say this. This is um, relevant to the topic. Um, when we dye speckles, um, I draw from kind of a limited pool of speckles because over the last 10 years, I've found certain colors will work and set and show up in a really nice way. Mm -hmm. So in every variation of speckle that we do, I draw from maybe 20 colors. So, and if we're working on things in a sequence, the overlap is going to be um, pretty high. Right. So if you're using TFA yarns to knit something like this, like for a mild effect, you're going to get say like a gold and a bright blue in several of the yarns, not those specifically, but just yeah. as an example, right. which will really help so for the be, overlap. For the, yeah, right? totally. You know, if it shows totally. up in one of your light ones and then it'll show up yeah. in your mid range as well. And then the other thing is, and something like a siege hat, something that's a smaller, like this isn't an entire sweater, but even in an entire sweater, my advice would probably be, and if you look at all of my five skein fades that I've sold for like City Limits kits, which is a sweater pattern that I designed that uses a marled gradient, there are five skeins and I go through like two colors in yeah. the five skeins. They don't yeah. go through the rainbow. They don't go from like yellow to green to blue all the way to purple. Like that's too many steps because you're going to need like one yellow, two, like a yellowy green and then a bluey green and then a blue and then a darker blue like maybe you'll get yellow to blue but it's to get all the way it's too many steps yeah that's my point yeah. keep it unless you want a rainbow striped sweater but it's going to be striped that's yeah. basically the thing and so that's why so many dyers make really beautiful gradient sets of mini skeins um and that that's a really great place to start mm -hmm. right because it also requires so like if you had mini skeins to make this you could absolutely make more than one for sure like you know it doesn't it doesn't take as much yarn as you think Look at the crazy light again. What is it? What is it? I would leave it this time. I'm gonna leave it. But that's um like looking back here, like yeah, like I would stick in one zone for gradients. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. Okay. Here's another question. Holiday plans with the family. Advent project ideas we covered. Yeah. But it threw in baking. How got, everybody seems to want to get three questions in at three. one. Three questions. What's I know I did see the baking. It just says baking exclamation point. Holiday plans with your point. family and baking. Those are two. Yeah, you can condense that. It's, that's, that's one yeah. question. But the baking part isn't a question. If there's an exclamation point, baking. Just like hooray for baking. Hooray for Which, baking. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Hooray for baking. Yeah. Do you know I've been talking actually how much I resent Halloween. I I go on. I've I've talked about my hatred for Halloween a ton. But all but now my resentment is about we still have a ton of Halloween candy in the house. So it seems over the top to make a cake. So I've or not been baking. Nice. Yeah, I've sure. not been doing anything. I yeah. love to bake and like I love to make something decadent on the weekend, but not when we're eating like little candy bars and little starbursts and all this stuff every second of the day. I mean I know what we, we could not eat it, but then also that's not happening. We're not, we're not capable. No, so the kids just have so much access to sugar and treats that it's like I'm not. I can't, Chris. Let's try. We're just trying to get, Come on. I don't know what to do. It's just One thing so. Not move the camera. I don't know. Sorry, guys. Sorry, everybody. Maybe we need to. Maybe I guess this is a bad timing. Of I mean, it's you it's should beautiful see, in person. It's gorgeous. Yeah. This is just not the right time and location for this. It's gonna make it hard to watch. I don't think it will. That's okay. It's not as bad. What as are our holiday plans? We don't have any holiday plans. Do you know what though? I want to talk to you about. Our kids have been talking to me about how much they love Advent calendars. <laughs> Probably because we've been working on Advent stuff. Yeah, but no, they do. I wanted they to do. talk. I wanted to mention too for anybody else who has uh, kids who are into Advents. Um, one year, I bought at the Scholastic Book Fair, which I'm volunteering at next week. I'm going to keep my eyes open if if they have one there. It was a 12, 12 days of Christmas book for kids. Blah. Every day, remember, I you wrap up the books, yeah. and every day yeah. there's a new holiday book, and yeah. they, I'm sure they have. You know, it doesn't have to be Christmas themed; it could be whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So, like, but the Scholastic one, it was really affordable. They're just like little paperbacks, and they were all that was. Fun. It was cool. Yeah. And so our eight year old 
was requesting another one of those. And then one year I bought, was it last year? This is a, this is a pros and cons. You're going to like roll your eyes at it, but I bought a crafting one where every day they opened a box and they could do a, it was a holiday craft. I remember it. And the reason why I thought you'd they roll your eyes. They managed it even a few years ago. No, I think it was more the age, right? That Micah would get frustrated. No, I bit. thought that you were going to say it was on the dining table for a month. Everything it was annoying. Is. Everything yeah, always Because it just was there. But our five year old. We could be a table store. We could, I could ref, like refinish tables for a living and everyone would have homework, toys, puzzles, cards, yeah. and um, little you, tea you Give me a on. table, I will cover it it's with crafts. It's not just you, the kids are pretty, pretty into it too. Uh, if you put a table near the garage, you will put all your junk on it. Not just me and the kids. You walk in the garage door and just drop all your stuff. No, that's you kid stuff. I don't have any stuff. <laughs> so craft one and a book one was really fun. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. I want to, I want and to a talk. chocolate one unless you want trouble with them. Wow, that goes without saying. Yeah. I have a beautiful, my mom made that gorgeous. We have like a, a you know, a fabric advent. We put on the wall and then. Oh, yeah. And put then the I, Lindor chocolate. And then somewhere. will I ask my mom, are you going, are you going to get the Lindor chocolate? She's got to furnish it now. But she gave the advent, the thing, the Lindor chocolates are so good. So it's a binding contract to keep us in mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in chocolate for the whole Christmas season. Yeah. All right, I got, we got the last question coming here. Okay, wrapping it up. The yeah. light is medium. What Sorry. are your plans for the yarn you spin from the roving your kids dyed? Will they pick? They will likely not pick. <laughs> Don't you feel? Um, I sort of touched on some plans, actually. You spun all three, right? I, I spun all three, yeah. and I touched on my plans, I think, last week. Nothing has come to fruition for them. The one that I did for Willow, I wish I had Is the here. intention to make them each something? Not necessarily. Right. Sort of, but also the, the fun of it was the dying, don't I you think? I think so, yeah. I don't think that they're too hung up on me knitting them something with their You also made a really big deal when you were spinning it. For each of the kids about how successful you know, it was the amazing choices yeah. they made and how great it looked and uh so it's like the thing is done yeah you know like the they got a lot out of it i got a lot out of it like everybody's happy and i may i mean ideally yeah i'll knit something and why not for each of them like why would i knit something for my daughter with the one that my son died when yeah. she died one too so i probably would but you know um, to varying degrees they all knit so if it had to sit around for a while and then uh one of them mm -hmm. get, mm -hmm. you know, a birthday present or something for one of the yeah. little babies in the family. That yeah. would be pretty rewarding too. So, right. So I don't feel too, I'm not too concerned, but except for, so the one that my daughter dyed, that it's like hot pink and purple and orange and yeah. it's really cute. And she is coming into maybe needing sweaters. Not really. The thing is, I love to knit sweaters and I love to knit particularly with roving, with, with, yarn that I spun it's really fun to knit a sweater because it's something that is um well on the one hand they're gonna outgrow it so maybe it's less rewarding it just feels more substantial um but maybe a scarf is better because they could wear it forever I don't know I had wanted to knit Willow a striped sweater the boys are super into scarves they Willow really prefers like uh cashew, a little yeah. neck warmer but the boys love scarves. No, she likes her. She she has a scarf and she likes them, oh, but they're not true. supposed yeah, the, to wear it. I don't like one? to send her. She's so they don't little kids. You're not supposed to put in scarves because no, they're. That's a kindergarten rule. I would let her drive to school. She's very responsible. <laughs> so, but I don't have any specific plans for them. At one point, our middle son was asking for uh, fingerless mitts. Right. So may, like that would be an easy thing to make. Although that also, I feel like I do put extra pressure on my hand spun that it needs to be really valued yeah. because so, and I feel like fingerless mitts are kind of throwaway. Like, I don't think he's going to, he's Anything not going to wear tiny fingerless hands, mitts for a well, long time. They would also have them in mud puddles. For them yeah. Seconds. It seems like not the smartest. Yeah. So if I want something that he'll be able to wear for a long time, a hat is probably a better idea. I think that's a good answer. The answer is they got what they're getting from it, <laughs> which was uh, the dying day they was really super fun. And then seeing that's the, the fun results and knowing they made good choices yeah. is perfect. And anything else is gravy. Rowan might knit something for uh, a baby for a birthday. He won't. He, no, that's right. He has my finishing power when it comes to knit he projects. He has, sadly. 
he started a little sweater, a baby, a, um, a newborn vertebrae. Is that what it's called? A little, you know, the little sweater that it doesn't close in the front. It's open. It's a cardigan. It just covers the back and the arms. I know. What that it's is, such yeah. a cute little sweater. And he, uh, we have a new niece in the family, and he knit like ninety percent of it. No, I want to say eighty, maybe eighty-five. He knit the body. He knit one sleeve, and I think he he's a you know a third of the way on the second sleeve. But I. I fear it's all, it's too small now. Right. Because he didn't finish it, you know, before the baby was born. Yeah. And I think it might be too small now. Now, look, though, there will be more babies. I think I'm still going to push him to finish it. But he knit so much of it himself. Right. That I didn't want to. I was prepared to knit just the ribbing around the opening for him. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, well, that's annoying to pick up all the stitches. He can knit ribbing, though. So anybody doesn't love knitting ribbing, you know. Right. So I thought, okay, I'll knit just that. And then at least we can say that he did like it all. But I didn't want to take it up. So I'm just saving it for him for the next baby, yeah. I guess. But I don't think, I think he is sort of that project, unfortunately, made him feel like he doesn't like knitting. To his credit, though, he has taught himself Gaelic this year. Yeah, so. He's know. got other things going on. Yeah. He's also, I'm uh, no longer capable of beating him at chess, I don't think. Yeah. They also, I was out of town and Chris took them to a restaurant that involved having to order on an iPad or something. Let's not get too far into this one. I'm fine. I know how to use a phone. It's fine. Yeah, right. I was like, oh my God, how did you manage? And it's like, thank God Rowan was there. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's what's going on. So I think we answered all our questions, did we? The light is back to normal. It looks perfect now. Well, here you go start and then we bookended it with decent light and then you get a whole bunch of artistic expression in the middle yeah sorry i mean well i mean sorry not sorry what am i supposed to do <laughs> what am i supposed to do <laughs> have a professional youtube set not be right beside the window no can't no do that. absolutely no chance so um thanks for watching guys and we will see you in the next one thank you for the questions and take care